In Gotham City, the Power Rangers lose track of the Flash, who is safely assessing these new arrivals to his world from a distance. The Pink Ranger still has Batman, but she's got a problem. Superman asks him to land her, uh, pterodactyl? They need to talk. Meanwhile, Jon Stewart has arrived on the scene, and at Barry's prompting, he contains the Power Rangers. The Flash believes this is some kind of misunderstanding. Batman doesn't exactly look friendly at a first glance. But the Power Rangers don't take kindly to being contained, and decide to fight back. Mastodon, Triceratops, Sabretooth, Tyrannosaurus, Dragon Zord! Power Rangers, go! The Zords attack and knock John down. Cyborg teleports in and unleashes a beam of energy, but the Red Ranger returns fire with his Zord. However, the Flash has a few tricks up his sleeve. Running up and behind the robot, the Flash is able to face through the Tyrannosaurus Dinosaur and pull the Red Ranger through the machine. But before he can knock the Ranger out, Superman stops his friend. He and the Pink Ranger ask the two teams to stand down, as Kim just had a very intense conversation with Wonder Woman. As both sets of heroes calm down, Zack apologizes for attacking Batman and starting all of this. The Rangers confirm they are indeed from another world, and that a villain, Lord Zed, came here with them. Their enemy is dangerous, possesses powerful magic, and must be stopped before the Rangers can return home. Far away, Lord Zed finds himself in a strange city. The people living here warn him not to draw attention to himself, but it is too late. A giant looks down on the entire city. However, this is Lord Zed. He does not run, he will not hide, and he will speak to this giant, face to face. His would-be captor's name is Brainiac, and he is impressed. The new villains finally have a lot in common. They both want to conquer the universe, and though they want to do different things with this power, they quickly find a sense of respect for one another. Lord Zed proposes an arrangement. Brainiac seeks a city from Earth, but does it have to be this Earth? The thought intrigues Brainiac, and he accepts it. After all, he seeks knowledge above all else. Another dimension would be fascinating and could offer him much. Zed thinks he can make it all happen. The only thing he needs is a few of Brainiac's creatures from these bottled cities. On Earth, Cyborg suddenly detects activity across the internet. Monsters attacking the entire planet. Superman races off, calling heroes from all over the world, while Batman turns on the Power Rangers, saying they're the ones that brought this here. Zack accepts this blame, but promises they're going to make things right. They're going to help, because they are the Power Rangers, and this is what they do. Hello and welcome to Comic Island! My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Justice League Power Rangers number 2. Well, that was awesome. I really liked this comic. Not only do we get some fun interactions between the Justice League and the Power Rangers, but it's just so well drawn. I can't get over how great this art is and how nice it makes the comic on the whole. It was wonderfully polished, and the colors were just a great choice. The look, which I'd almost call kind of pastel in nature, it's just vivid, and it works so well for a comic like this. I mean, I can't get over how great this comic is just to look at. Meanwhile, the plot is just as solid. Everything about this feels like a classic version of a crossover. The teams meet up and get into a fight, while two fun villains team up and create a common threat for our heroes to eventually work together and defeat. Brainiac was a great choice, and he's just so awesome with Lord Zed. It also puts the beginning of issue 1, with the missing Angel Grove, into a very new light, and kind of makes the next couple of events exciting in what they promise to offer. I really like this comic, and would recommend you check it out for yourself. I'm not even a big Power Rangers fan, and I still just love this thing. Both the writing and the art embrace this wonderful sense of fun, and it's felt throughout the entire issue. There's some great lines and really fun parts. Issue 2 shows us that Issue 1 was no fluke by any means, and if the rest of the series holds to this trajectory, this crossover overall is going to be great. 
Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments section below. We're going to be covering this entire series, I'm quite happy to say, and it's all thanks to actually a patron requesting this through our bonus weekly reviews. You too can have a say in which comics we cover by becoming a patron. Check out the link in the video description below. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.